Higdon Outdoors Television is brought to you by Heavy Shot, the industry leader in performance shot shell ammunition. Tetra, hear the hunt. Momarsh, hunt hard, hide easy. Power Calls, unleash the power. Well, we're back hunting with our good buddy Ira McCauley. We're here at uh, Locust Grove. With Still mornings, frost. I mean, what was it, 20, what, five, 26 degrees last night? You start to see that moisture start, that ice start melting. Here, probably around, I would say in the next hour or so, you'll start seeing some birds flying pretty good. We're right here on the pad, and it's a dead calm, still day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these Versa blinds, get in the shadows here in this and this brush, buck brush looking stuff. Brooks moving, Nate's not too far behind, and we're gonna keep ripping. We're doing a little midday destination hunt for some gadwalls that have been living here. And uh, I poked hole in my waders, so I made a quick trip back to uh, back to the house to get some new waders and made, made uh, Bo the captain of the team. So just kind of midday slack, nothing really happening. And uh, hopefully they start trading around here in a little bit and the boys get some banging in. So that's the plan. Birds have been sitting in this pocket and it's a little beaver run. You can actually see what the beaver run is, what's, what's open water, what happened, hasn't frozen. But we're strategically not busting this ice up to where our hunting spot is. That'll keep, number one, it'll keep their attention on the decoys and not on us is, is the most important thing. But number two, when you bust all that ice up with the wind blowing this way, it'll blow in through our decoy spread and not look natural. So taking advantage of the natural hole that they kept open already. Got our cover back there. That'll come right down this little gap right through here. Key right in on the pulsators, not looking at us to their left. And they ought to, honestly, and then more importantly, the sun's gonna be in their eyes the more as the day progresses. So we ought to be in good shape. We're actually really close to where we normally brush the blinds. We're only about 100 yards from what Ira calls Numbies. It's a little shed where he stores his pre-cut brush. The reason we're here is because it's frozen. So all this more soil that Ira has planted has been frozen and these ducks have kept it open right here. So we pulled out a few versa blinds and Nathan and I are sitting here hunting and Ira and Kelly went out to go scout. But uh, today is not the day where you're just gonna go and change the world. I mean, the ducks don't wanna fly. They're very comfortable. There's no wind, even though it's sunny. Uh, we're hunting with the birds are living. So we're getting really sneaky, couple shooters, and we're gonna sit here and shoot them where they're living. Hopefully it works out. These ducks have just been living here since opening weekend. We haven't, they haven't got any new ducks, so only about 200 ducks here so you just gotta the less decoys the better this time of year this is a late season cold day and you just got to do what you got to do here hide well add water motion very little decoys extremely extremely good hide had to go back to number one once again I have to get the hide luckily we have sun and so the sun is going to get us in those shadows i'm hoping we finish the ducks right here nate and brooke are up to bat We'll see how they do. flasher Brooks got it on a remote so that'll make a big difference you know there's a lot of times where you don't want this bad boy running but when you want to hit them on the corners especially what we've got here in the gadwall and whatnot other ducks love all the motion so keep this bad boy on a remote so we're in control
Go. I mean, these ducks almost got shot, but luckily, luckily, we didn't harm any ducks, but, you know, first group of the day, they caught us off guard, came in here sneaky, and we were behind them. Kill him, kill him. Cash. Shot a duck. To hunt where the ducks live, the hide's good, shotgun shells work, and we remember how to shoot a shotgun. You picked out that hen pretty good, didn't I you? I shot the one that was in front of me. Yeah. On the left. Here we go. Get ready. Get ready. Go. Go. Oh, you got him! Good shot, Nathan. Nice job, guys. Oh, heck, I only had to shoot one of them. I killed two out of that group. Nathan was doing work. Cash. Thank you, Nathan. Good shooting. Man, talk about having it made. I got somebody, Kelly, set my blind up for me. I got Bo over there calling ducks. And then I got Nathan shooting them for me. I mean, this, you talk about cookie cutter duck hunt. I'm just, here, I'm just here for the party, you know? After waking up at 4 a.m. in the freezing cold of opening day, when that first bird locks up in the decoys, you better be packing heavy bismuth. In the waterfowl world, density is the name of the game, and bismuth is 22% more dense than steel. That means cleaner kills and less work for you and your dog. Heavy bismuth has a softer shot that's safer for older fixed choke and classic double shotguns. So when those birds light in front of you, give them the bismuth. Yeah, we were standing down there on the levee. We watched that first group get up, fly over here, and we heard the barrage, and we were like, man, looks like there's just as many coming back as there were that went that way. Some days you just uh, have to get those first three shells out of the way. Here, to the left, to the left. Kill it, Nate. <laughs> I did get one with this gun. Apparently that it does awesome. kind of shoot straight. What happened to, I said get it, Nate, and then I pulled the trigger. I know. Been do that from time to time. Cash! That's okay, I already needed to kill a duck. He's probably only killed about 7,000 this season. No, 699. 699. <laughs> go, Nate, go. Bye, guys, see you later. <laughs> and don't come back. And don't come back! There we go. Took you two shots. <laughs> He's dead though. I, I, I'm not letting these ducks get out of this hole. Hey, he's dead. Good I'm, shot. You're good. Were you talking trash down there, Kelly? A little bit, because I didn't shoot. I can talk all the trash I want when you don't shoot. I ain't got a bead on my gun. I'm just, I'm just guessing at this point. Yeah. <laughs> I would kill that duck. Dog's yeah, out. Yeah, kill I'm it. Kill it. Yeah, kill it. It's way high. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, Nate! <laughs> yeah! Good shot, Nate. Kill the duck! I had time to think about it. Oh, he Whoa. went. He went like this. So you know when they're just like target acquired, like ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And I, I heard it go ding, 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 ding in his head. My little Terminator words were coming. To, you know, like take them. Hen, gray duck, target locked. <laughs> it was a Drake, actually. Oh, good. Nice Drake. We're hunting destination birds, and they've been living right there. Let's do it. It's a, it's a no-brainer for me. I just assume we get in here and get ripping. So guys, this is a huge testament to us at Momark. You know, the whole thing is being portable. When you've got ice like this and we're on a thaw, everything starts changing. So our hole that was, you know, maybe 60 yards long has turned into 160 yards long. I want to be, you know, up on the upper end of the thaw where they originally want to be. So here in a few seconds, we can have this thing tore down, loaded up, only using a dozen decoys. Why not move? So we're going to get in there. We're going to do it Momar style. It hadn't been a bad hunt, but it's going to make it better. We only got about another two and a half hours for shooting time, but it won't take us 30 minutes. 
It's what Mo Marsh was built for. Uh, versatile blinds that we can go set up over the edge of the water. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Just go out there where they've been wanting to sit. This morning, everything was iced up. We had a little ice hole up there with a bunch of gadwalls on it, but they were in that ice hole because their preferred spot was froze solid. So as the day went on, you know, the high's like 53, there's a little breeze, sun got on the ice, their preferred spot opened up. So suddenly we'd lost our competitive advantage, so we threw everything in the sled, came over here, reset by these pin oak trees. This is really where they want to be. Again, just shows the versatility of the tools. You know, we went there for a reason and we moved for a reason. So it took us a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but we should have a better shoot here. We're where they want to be. The sun is now at our back, the wind is now at our back, and our ice hole that we had is gone. So stay tuned, we'll find out whether it was worth it or whether we just, uh, you know, did a little bit extra exercise. Let him come, let him come. Here we go. They're gonna bank left and come right in. We'll stand up and shoot, I guess the left one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Cash. I would say that I think we made the right choice by, by uh, moving. Holy that moly. Was, I stood up and they were still coming in. I was like, they're not gonna see me. Hunt hard. Hot easy. Shoot them where the corn goes in. Shoot them where the snails go in, in this case. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hunt like a pro, you need something durable. Tough enough to work in salt water. Something fast and convenient. Easy to charge. Something that's going to be seen from far away. It's got to move. It's got to look real. And it's got to bring the birds close. Hunt like a pro with the Pulsator Pro from Higdon Outdoors. <laughs> Kill him, Kelly. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. Kill it, Kelly. Man, do you see him flipping around getting in here? That's pretty. <laughs> well, I'd say the move was. Good idea. Yeah, paid we're off. We're standing here like this, like the ducks. We're over there, like as hiding as best we can. Now we're just standing up. Don't move, yeah. <laughs> Don't nobody move. Nobody move. <laughs> <laughs> here she comes back. <laughs> Call her across, Kelly. Call her across. Oof. Shot Bo. Who shot that dog? Bo. Bo. Big Bo got it. A lot of people overhandle their dogs in a hunting situation, especially on cripples. Like, you know, you're, you're better off just letting them hunt the area of fall and, and do just like she did. She ran, came back, caught the scent, and then it was game over. Yeah. Look at that hold she's got. What a professional hold. I taught her that. <laughs> we, we call that the mom in church. <laughs> Where you grab your kid and pull them out. What is it? A gadwall or a wedge? He's yours. He's yours. Cut him. Nice, Bo. Cash. Good job there, Bo. Thank you. you hit him hard, and he ha and he responded, no doubt. Yeah. I didn't want to lose it to the, the other hole over there either, you know. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Very good. Good work. We'll take it. That's the one thing I like about having run, running a cut down call is when I really need to do it, I'm pretty confident I can make them do it. Do something. They're either going to leave or they're going to come. That's Yeah, come back. Come back. <laughs> 
Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Cash. It was a Drake. Drake dad wall. Yep. Then the hand map. I was thinking about shooting at that mallard because he came by so many times after. Yeah, I know. I thought you were going to shoot at that mallard eventually. But when you first hit that mallard, he liked it. Yep. And then you quit calling and I kept on yep. and he did not want to hear anything. He listening for you. Yeah. Those teal, I looked up and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> two, yep. two, two Drake teal just back flapping in the decoys. Yeah, they totally surprised me. Wow, that's a nice gadwall. Mounter, purple head. I like eating them. That's not, that's not. Kill him. Kill him. Oh, the low one got out. How'd the low one get out? How did it happen? It blew feathers out the back of him. Yeah, I didn't shoot. I didn't shoot. <laughs> nope. There it was. We're good. We're good. We're doing good. Oh, yeah, on the right. On the right. Don't, Nate, don't move. Nate, don't move. Nate, don't move. <laughs> Get Lyra. Get Lyra. Get him. Well, we had two in there. Nice shot, Bo. Now we got Ira in the hot seat. Last one. They're going to come. They're going to come. The right one's a Drake. Ooh, it landed back on it. Last one. <laughs> that was one we were looking for. Cash. That was really pretty. Stop calling. Let hey, the uh, pulsators do the work. If you want to be seen from far away, your spread needs motion. If you want to bring them close, you need lifelike motion. The clone from Higdon Outdoors is as real as it gets. Over land, over water, no decoy moves better. It's the kind of motion that can't be ignored. Learn more about the clone at HigdonOutdoors.com today. All right, guys, so this is a great close to a great day. You know, with Mo Marsh, this is where it was invented. This is where it's from, everything grew up right here and we went back to Ira's roots today we used his old layout boat it just is so cool to get a hunt where the birds are going you watch where they're going that's what duck hunting is all about and be able to move within a very quick amount of time so you get all your layout blinds and everything else you get out there and it's, you get really stuck to a spot and you're like well if we move it's gonna take us two hours well it took us 25 minutes to move today and we were already back into ducks the way they were finishing at the end here was just gorgeous just breaking out of bunches really pretty you watch gray ducks gray ducks always love to land in the middle or where they want to land especially when you're not in the trees so like they had that hole open in front there and so in the beginning it was real nice there as soon as it started thawing out they chose this spot and so we just had to be mobile the whole thing with momarsh we're being mobile we're having fun and we're enjoying the crap out of it because this is just what duck hunting is all about super great day Super awesome ducks. I like shooting mallards, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I love shooting gadwall and I love shooting widgeon. I love shooting teal. And so today was pretty much a perfect day. Laziness sets in where you want to set set up, you know, or stay where you set up to start with. But common sense tells you when you have the equipment to move, let's just shift over to the other side. Uh, as as the later in the day when the sun started to set more, uh, we needed to be over here anyway. Especially when this ice started melting, our little pocket that they normally were in become a lot bigger and where they naturally wanted to go was right in this area it paid off it was an easy thing to do when you have the right equipment it doesn't take long to pick up move over here i mean maybe goodness it took us what 20 15 20 minutes uh but at the end of the day man it was it was a lot better as soon as we sat down first group come in and we're just right on top of us so we're gonna pick up and go eat some brisket for dinner today it was uh you know we're it's just starting to warm up a lot of ice disappearing the ducks really did not fly you know some days are like that like no wind pretty pretty calm pretty warm you know still a lot of ice around so i kind of wanted to come hunt this little hole so that we could hunt out of the versa blinds and the gadwalls have been wanting to live right here but this morning it was froze solid so we started over there where we had an ice hole 
and just not much flew. And as the day went on, more water started opening up, more water started opening up. So we made our move over here. If we'd have stayed over there, we would have just watched them landing over here. So, you know, it's, it's, I love being able to hunt mobile and make, uh, you know, pivot when you need to, to, to put yourself in a better position to get them. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of products that allow guys to do that, not just on a wetland like this, but on public ground or anywhere, you know, if you notice that something's happening and you decide that you're gonna put, you know, stack the odds a little more in your favor, uh, sometimes it's a good idea to pull the trigger and do it while you can, and it pans out.